Let's start out in 5A Division I. Some rematches, including Burns and Spartanburg, regular season Vikings trounce the Rebels 58-14. Rebs are missing some key players. They built a 3-0 lead tonight into the second quarter, but that proves to be a costly turnover game. They knew they'd have to be perfect. Led to a Cam Rich-Smith touchdown and a 7-3 lead for the Vikings. Spartanburg, which had a bye last week, later sees Trey Burke hook up with Justin Rice. 67 yards, 14 to 3. There was more scoring before the half. Zy Landrum has it picked by Peyton Jones. He's off to the races. 21 to 3 Vikings at the half. And a Spartanburg team holding the opposition just over 14 points a game. But with that touchdown from Kane Rogers to Elijah Clark in the third quarter, Burns got within 10 at 27 17. But Trenton Lynch following suit for Spartanburg with that sprint to the house. Spartanburg rolling on to the victory. 37-17, Mark Hodges' team heading on to the next round. We stayed the course. You know, we'd at the end of the day, which is what happened, just, just all the work that we put in and who we are showed up at the end. We're going to continue to get better to be able to finish. And uh, as we get better, it's going to be crazy because we're going to just keep taking over, man. Trying to bring back the memories of those great Spartanburg teams that have won state titles. Maybe this one's got a title in them. They've got uh, some tough folks ahead, like the JL Man Patriots home tonight against Clover, trying to take down the Blue Eagles. First meeting between the schools since 05. Trip Ryan gets it to Keyshawn Henderson. That's a pretty good idea. 50 yards in the score. He can make a lot happen with the ball in his hands. Nakias Morrison later in the opening quarter in a 7 7 game. Puts man back in front. Somebody's helmet came flying off. The Patriots, which made a deep run a year ago. Now they're heading on to the next round in 5A Division I. Coming off their bye week, they get the win, 44-14. Spartanburg and Man, a rematch from the postseason last year. Next week, Dutch Fork against Matt Reel in Boiling Springs. And, well, Matt Reel's team trying to pull it would be a monumental upset. 7-3 on the year for the Bulldogs. And... Lincoln Husky finding his favorite target, Kyle Patterson. That led to a Husky to Patterson hookup on a great catch in the end zone. But Dutch Fork has won seven of the last eight state titles for a reason. That guy right there, Tom Knotts, their coach, and the talent around him. 42-14, to 14, Dutch Fork ending Boiling Spring season at 7-4. They move on to the next round at 10-0. 5A Division II, another one of those rematches. Back in week number 10, Greenwood went in, won a physical game against Hillcrest on the Rams' home field. Here comes Greenwood in the home dark uniforms, ready for battle against the Rams, and Todd Summers has the recap. In the second round of the playoffs, Greenwood taking on region rival Hillcrest. The Eagles get the ball first and score first. Bryce Seaborn goes straight ahead for the one-yard touchdown. Eagles up 7-0. Midway through the first quarter, Kristen Lewis takes the snap, makes a few moves, sheds a couple of tackles, and takes off, racing 60 yards for the score. Greenwood leads 14-0. Just 25 seconds later, the Rams respond. Frank Starks makes a move at the line of scrimmage, bounces it outside, cuts it back inside, and Starks is gone. 72 yards for the touchdown. Hillcrest cuts the Greenwood lead to 14-7. Early second quarter, Eagles Rams 10-yard line. Tristan Lewis tries to make a play that isn't there, and Trayvon Walker comes up with the interception. Midway through the second quarter, the Eagles get the ball back. Jackson Free throws across the middle, but DJ Rapley makes the diving interception to set the Eagles up near midfield. Nine seconds to play in the first half. Tristan Lewis goes off the left side and into the end zone for the one-yard touchdown. Greenwood leads 21-7 at the break. Under three minutes to play in the third quarter. Rams facing third and really long. Jackson Free throws it up to the front pylon, and Weston Wilson goes up, secures the ball against his helmet with his left hand for an amazing 24-yard touchdown. Hillcrest cuts the Greenwood lead to 21-14. Early fourth quarter, Tristan Lewis throws it up, and Jaden Adams brings it down for a 24-yard touchdown. Greenwood leads 28-14. Under five minutes to play, Hillcrest comes right back. Josh Smith straight ahead, five-yard touchdown. Rams back within seven, but they can get no closer as Greenwood holds off Hillcrest 28-21. Found a way to win. I mean, we knew Hillcrest had a great team, and they were going to come in fired up, and you know, we were 100% sure they were going to be upset about, you know, the previous game, and, and they showed it. They came back and made it a heck of a football game there at the end. In Greenwood, for the High School Red Zone, I'm Todd Summers.
So Greenwood moves on. Meanwhile, Riverside and Gaffney in 5A Division 2. In the regular season over Riverside, Gaffney won by seven. One of their many close wins on the year, but Javon Gilmore and Shane Davidson had something else in mind tonight. That made it seven zip in favor of the Tribe. Later in the second quarter, it's Gilmore taking it in for the 14-0 lead. Gaffney was up 21-7 in the second. Gilmore and Junior Smith, first of two on the night for Junior, 28-7 Tribe. They roll on 41-21. Now in their sights, another team that wears black and gold, Han Jones. It doesn't matter where you line up and what you do. They have a scheme to block it. It's just a matter of, of being physical up front and maintaining blocks on offense and getting off of blocks on defense. Fortunately, we do get to play it at home, and that's one thing that these kids have worked for by winning the region and being the number two seed. And Gaffney advancing after a bye last week with a 9-1 record. So what about Hannah? They've got to get on the bus next week. They got to play at home tonight against... Gain. Then later on, this is third quarter action as Patterson on a three yard touchdown run, extending Hannah's lead to 43 19. Junior Pierre, the deflection. Jamarian Oliver with the pick six for the Yellow Jackets. They get another win. They are moving on 57 34. Hannah and Gaffney in the postseason again. They have played some classic. In the 1A upper state, the Abbeville Panthers at home against the Hawks of Blackville held up. A couple of teams that have met over the years that had not met over the years, and you would have thought they might have based on the fact that they're both traditional powers. And Abbeville used to be a 1A program. In any case, here they are getting together in round number two. Demarcus Leach, tough to stop whether he's playing on any level. Out of the backfield. Future Gamecock defensive back in for the 7-0 lead. Early second quarter, Leach and Jaden Baylor goes up and makes the catch. Abbeville cruising on to another decisive win. Now 41 and three in the playoffs since 2015 with that 41 to 13 win. They're moving on to the next round. Meanwhile, Dixie eliminated. They made the trip down to the Orangeburg area and they fall against Hunter Kinder Tyler 46 to 13. Good season though for the Hornets. It ends at eight and three.